Welcome to The Chris Duncan Show. You ask questions and I answer them. Everything, super conscious, magnetic mind, transformation, creating a life you love and success. You've got questions and I've got answers. Welcome. Welcome to uh, The Chris Duncan Show. Uh, if you haven't been on one of these before, it's quite simple. Uh, you guys have sent in questions and I'm going to do my best to answer them. Uh, so wherever uh, you are out there listening, you might be here live with me. Uh, you might be on uh, YouTube. You might be on Spotify, uh, iTunes podcast. And, and if anyone who's on here uh, live isn't, uh, isn't listening uh, or, or being on any of those, uh, those places, you, you really should check them out. Uh, we have a lot of great content on YouTube, especially we're building our Spotify, uh, iTunes um, podcast out as well. So there's a lot of great information. And so uh, if you are here live, enjoy it. And, uh, and then also make sure you subscribe to get all the times that, that maybe you can't be here live. So, so thanks. Thanks for being here. Uh, the premise of this show is, you know, we have a lot of people in our uh, coaching programs. So we run a, a year-long coaching program called the Magnetic Mind uh, Masterclass. And, and that's a, it's a really great program. And I get a, I get a lot of questions uh, from people in the, in the class. And we never really had a designated time for me to answer questions. So what I decided to do was to answer those questions. But I thought I may as well put that out to the public. Um, because there's some some real good uh, gold nuggets with uh, uh, with those questions. So if you are in the masterclass, you would have sent in some questions. And uh, I've got about I think about 10, 10 questions that I'm going to uh, try to get through today. So so welcome. If you if you're new to my work or what we do, I teach people how to become creators, how to become super conscious, and tap into their own their own power. In a world full uh, of, of influencers, coaches, and mentors that are always taking your power or putting it in a pill or a narrative or a person or a metho mythology, we, we come in the other approach. We say, you're powerful. Uh, you're the miracle. You're, you're the healer. And we want to show you how to be that. We have a full certification as well. And, uh, and if you want more information, um, well, we've got a link for you if, if you'd like that. So today, let's get started on the first question that came came in. Uh, I'll type it in uh, for those that uh, that are here live, uh, so you guys can read the question, and then I, I'll read it out as well. So the first question is: Can you talk about the importance of mindset and skill set to build a successful business? I understand you have to see it. Uh, but how to pull yourself out of the rabbit holes or the victim mindset if the skill set is limited. It takes time to learn new skills and at the same time feeling discouraged when we do not see the results. Uh, many thanks. Yeah, so, so there's just that there's a lot of um, there, there's a lot in that question. And uh, I, I decided to take this question because uh, I have a reasonably sized business. We do about uh, about one point two million dollars in sales per month um, across our businesses. So so it's reasonably successful and got a long a long way to go really. Uh, so the the key that I've found in business is it's quite predictable. There are certain skill sets you need at certain times, and if you understand that at, at the at the very beginning. Uh, you must start out and find a, a, a way to provide value in the world. And money flows to those who provide value in a way that people want to pay for it. So the, the first thing you must have or, or get a skill in is, is, is what are you going to be able to deliver to the world? How do you deliver that? Okay, that, that's very important. The, the next thing is actually how do I sell it? And uh, and that's that's obvious too. So can you see that it's predictable? So, so first it's, well, what is the value and how do I make sure that when I provide it to people, they say, hey, that was good. The second is how do I sell it? Then the third is how do I get enough attention of those who actually want to, um, to buy it, which is marketing. So you can break down the skills. So, so there's skill number one is to learn value. Skill number two, learn, learn how to sell. Skill number three, uh, learn how to market. Skill number four, I'd probably call build, which is how do you build uh, leverage or automation? How do you have things work without you? So, 
you know, do you use technology so that, uh, you know, you don't have to deliver the product one-on-one anymore? Or do you use people uh, and have people come in and have them deliver without your time? Well, once you learn how to um, deliver and sell the product without your time, which sounds a lot more difficult than it is, when, when you arrive there, after learning how to deliver it and then learning how to sell it, then learning how to market it, learning how to deliver it without your time is, is just as much of a, a step as the others and it's not bigger or smaller. The next step after that is, is actually, how do, you, how do you then lead it? So how do you then become the, the leader of, of all of that? And then after that is how do you invest? How do you diversify and start the whole process again? So I found that uh, the first two levels can get you to about $100,000. Uh, having a good, uh, a good product that generates referrals and uh, being able to sell it well, you should be able to get a company or a business up to about $10,000 a month. To get, to get to the next level, I guess about half a million dollars, you do need to get your marketing working. Uh, and then past that, it's quite hard to scale without things working without you. Uh, so I think that if you get things working without you, take you to the two or three million dollar level. Uh, and then what I found at that stage is then leading that while diversifying and starting with another product and going again. Uh, you no, know, no, you're not the only one here, uh, Terry. Uh, there's 125. Yeah, actually, let's uh, let's get everyone. Can you jump in the chat box and and say hi, uh, all uh, all 120 of you? I'd love to see uh, who's here. Where where is everyone from, by the way? Uh, it's good to uh, good that you're all here, all over the world. So so anyway, I don't normally get too many business questions, um, but but I did enjoy that one. The the second half of that question is well how do we pull ourselves out of the the victim you know uh, let me just read it again uh, how do you pull yourself out of the rabbit holes or the victim mindset if the skill set is is limited it takes time to learn and uh, not feeling discouraged blah 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 you know and and I, and I say blah 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 to that question because because we we the the, the question's so rooted in this idea that. Uh, you know, you, you should just be born and be able to do do it, you know? You know what I mean? It's like, I should just be able to turn up and just and just do it. And and it's, it's just not true, you know? So the, as, as you're going for things that you want, this idea that it should just be easy is, is not true. In fact, there's such, there's so many misguided ideas out there um, that, that things should just be easy, you know? Oh, the law of attraction, if I just think about it, it will show up that's not really reality. In fact, humans don't even want that reality. We don't. We, we don't. We, we think that, that we might like that, but, but really, uh, you know, people say, well, you know, I just can't wait to retire and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to have cocktails on the beach and I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to sit margaritas in, in uh, Mexico. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. But, but the truth is, is that might be great for a week. Okay. You, have, you know, you have a margarita sitting on the beach, but then you know, maybe another week, and then you might start looking around. By about three weeks, if you're still satisfied with sitting on the beach and having margaritas, you're literally just an alcoholic. Like it's quite a pathetic life. You're just sitting there blobbing out. You're not really, you're not living. There's no challenge. There's no, do you see, it's quite, it's quite a pathetic existence really. But we've got this idea that that's what we might like, don't we? We have this idea, but, but that, that you're just, a, you're basically a, a beach bum at that point aren't you? You, you know, you, you basically, and, and so human, humans don't actually want, the, to want that. What we actually want is to go on adventures that are difficult. We want, to, we want to overcome challenges and we want to have a human experience. Is, is it true? Like if you look at everything that humans are obsessed about, um, sport, um, music, uh, art, everything, there's a risk to it. You make a piece of music, there's a risk that people won't like it. You make a movie, in a movie, there's a drama. In a movie, there's a drama. It's never just, you know, they, they get what they want. There's a drama. Sport, there's a risk you'll lose. We don't like to watch sport where the teams are uneven. Uh, and by the way, this idea that there needs to be some sort of um, something to overcome, but a chance that you actually can overcome it, isn't just human. In fact, 
uh, if baby if baby rats, uh, uh, you know, when they're, when they're, they're small, if one rat is 10% bigger, stronger, it will, it will typically, if they wrestle, that 10% stronger rat will always win. You know, like it's just, it's a significant amount. And however, the, the rat that's 10% smaller um, will still like to play and tussle and, and, and wrestle, even though it will lose. However, if, if the, ba the smaller rat doesn't win at least 30% of the time, it will give up. It will give up. If there's no chance of overcoming the odds, it will give up. Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? If the bigger rat doesn't give it a little bit of a chance and let it win sometimes, so it's not even a human thing. It's a, that we like challenge. And if that rat at 30% of the time allows itself to it, it will, is, wins, it will be addicted to that game and it will keep trying to improve and keep trying to improve. That's what we actually want. And so there's this idea that, uh, you know, these setbacks we don't want. So it reminds me, I'm from New Zealand, if you didn't know, and uh, uh, New Zealand has an amazing sporting team called the All Blacks, and it's a rugby team and uh, very, very successful rugby team. However, they were, you know, they've won like 90 something percent of all their matches. And uh, to all my Kiwis out there, we're very, very proud of our team. And, you know, this is playing against much bigger countries. They win over 90 percent. However, they had this problem that each World Cup, every four years, they would, uh, they would have a big problem and uh, they would, would cause themselves to, to, you know, kind of fall at the last minute. And, uh, you know, they, they lost in like the quarterfinals, which was, you know, unheard of. And then they did it again. And they had this real problem with just being the best team for, for three years, beating everyone. And then in the crunch matches, losing. And, and what happened was because there was so much pressure on them to win, they were, uh, they were the best team, so much pressure that in these matches, it would just get the better of them. And, and I, I was listening to a uh, commentary when they changed it. So they changed something and then they won the next two World Cups back to back, right? Which means eight years of being the best, which uh, had only been done, I think, by the South Africans. I think one won, but I don't know. Actually, I don't know if anyone's won it back. To, I don't remember. Anyway, they won it twice in a row, which is what they should have done. They rose to their, um, their level. And, and what they did was instead of when the pressure came on, uh, they used to say, wow, look at all this pressure. We better perform. Instead, they created a different ritual. It gives me chills to say it. They created a different ritual. And the ritual that they changed it was they changed it to saying, we chose this. We chose this moment. We chose to make this team. We get to be the 15 players on this field. We chose to be here. All of our, I'm getting chills. It's so crazy. It explains to you. They, they would say our whole life, this is all we wanted. So they created this ritual as the team that look around and go, guys, we're here. We're here. This is what we always wanted. It's the most pressure filled game. Millions of people are watching it. We chose this. Yes, look what we're doing. We chose this. We chose this. We chose to be here. And man, did they win some matches in the last few minutes. They chose it. And so what I, what I took from that is as I'm creating my business and, and you know, I get asked to do bigger investments or spend more money or do more things or, you know, and, and it feels stressful when things happen. I just remember I chose this. I chose this. I wanted, when I get someone, uh, you know, uh, completely go after me and my family, uh, you know, because they, they think that something that I've said is against their religion or something and they go at it. I remember I chose to put myself out there, you know. I chose, I chose to, to, to be there. Uh, I chose to be, I chose to be out in the, uh, you know, in the, in the main and in, in the, in the limelight, I chose to make this. Does this make sense? So, so I want you to take this from, from that story. Expect the challenge. Expect that challenge. We chose this. You chose, so you're going to go build the business. It's a difficult thing to do. You want to build a happy family? 
there's things you got to do. You chose it. You don't want it any other way. You chose it. You, you know, you're, this is what you wanted to create. Because you can easily go sit on the sidelines. I say to my wife, at least once a month, I say, remember, we can, we can close this whole business down at any moment. And then we go, no, I would never want to do that. Does that make sense? Right? We wouldn't want to do it, but, but just knowing you can do it. I coach this, this amazing, um, successful uh, lady. Uh, she, she runs a very successful dental practice. And she, she said, Chris, I'm so stressed. I need better staff. I've got the, 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 all these things. I said, you know, you, you, you can always just let, let it go. You can always just close the business down. You chose this. You chose this business. So, so you must understand, you, you chose to, to be being a human. You, you chose to, to go out and create. You chose it. And it's the journey. It's the journey that is so much fun. It's the, it's the journey. When you realize you're choosing to go out there and create something that you haven't done before, you haven't done it. You don't know what you need to do. You're like, you're, you're driving down a, a, a highway and it's pitch black everywhere. You can only see what the lights of your car are shining on. You can only see, you know, maybe a hundred feet in front of you. But you know where you're going. You want to create a successful business, but you don't know what's around the next corner. And, and you've, you've, just got to, you've just got to know that, is that life's not supposed to be uh, uh, easy. But it is easy. It, you know, it's not supposed to be this. It's not supposed to be just, uh, oh, I think it and it turns up. Just imagine how boring life would be if those ridiculous ideas, oh, you just think about it and then it turns up in your life. Like, that would, that, would, that would be terrible. That would be terrible. We would just be gluttonous. We would, we would just sit around. We would, we would have nothing. We wouldn't even, we would very quickly not even enjoy anything we had. Does that make sense? If that was actually, if we, if we didn't have to actually go for it, how does the universe even know that you really want it? If you didn't have to become something, how utterly boring would that be? Wouldn't it? They'll just just give me a yes in the chat. Wouldn't that like? Yeah, and I know well, well Chris it would be really good to have a million dollars land in my lap right now. Yeah, but 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 it's much better to go out there and actually become the person to create it, because that's the joy. Because then you you know then you became something because it's a journey. You're gonna become the all again anyway. You are infinite potential anyway. There's no stopping you returning to infinite abundance and potential. That that's happening. It's called death. It's 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 at the end of the road for all of us. It, we're not gonna. That is one thing we're gonna end up being the all at some point. And, and so the, this this idea that oh, well, it should just be here without any form of resistance uh, is actually not what we desire. We didn't choose that. Imagine the All Blacks. They said, well, we don't want this pressure. We just wish the other team would fold. They don't want the other team to fold. You want to win when the other team is healthy, playing their best, and you want to win then. You want to play the best people in the world, and you want to win. You don't want them to have an injury. You don't, you, 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 that's what they want. That's what they chose, you know? You don't want it handed to you. Handing it to you, uh, you know. Here, you know, a friend of mine. We're talking about this yesterday, or maybe it was this morning, and we're talking about, you know, if, you, if it just gets given to you, you don't build you. You know, there, well, there it is. There's, there's your house. There's everything. Well, you're great. Well, I've got it all. Well, where's, where's the tension in my life to, to become something? And, and what happens is, is if there's nothing for you to become, if there's no meaning, if you just have it all, you're quite a lost soul. Aren't you quite a lost soul without an aim, without a without a point? And uh, you know, it, it's quite funny that the word sin, you know, to sin, that's actually an archery term to miss the mark. It's actually an archery term to sin. sin. It means to miss, miss the mark. And, and so it, it's very interesting, is that you know, the, the mark that you want to hit is a life fulfilled. And, and mainly that's a journey to, to a new aim, a new destination. So, 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 hey, really, really good conversation, but, uh, but I uh, hope it answered it well. I hope it answered it well. It, you know, when you're creating a business, there are predictable levels you need to go through. And, uh, you know, I would, I would never want anyone to miss the challenges of each level. 
oh my gosh, you know, when I look back at the challenges of being a solo uh, business owner, when it was just me and I was, I was everything in the company. And then, you know, when Harriet joined the company, it was just me and my wife and we were doing it all. We were the customer support, the bookkeep. We were, we were it all, you know, and uh, you know, it was stressful. It was crazy, but you know, somehow we got it working and then we're able to employ some staff and it. Like, as I look back with like rose tinted glasses, I go, boy, that, that was a time, hey, <laughs> that was a, that was a moment. And, and you, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to miss the moment thinking you wish it was just easier. You don't, it's much more satisfactory to, to overcome the obstacle and, and be able to say, look what, look what we became, you know, I think uh, there's a really great book. I really did. I really did enjoy it. I don't know him personally, um, but Ryan Holiday wrote a book. The obstacle is the way. And boy, is it uh, is it a good book? It talks about you know the obstacle is actually the way through it. That's actually the way. The way is of obstacles. Yet m- many of us are in a misguided idea that we want to try to avoid obstacles, but without the without the the risk or the drama or the trying to figure out a relationship if it's too easy or if it's too hard like those mice, it's uh, it, it's not what we desire. It's not what we desire. Someone's typed in the most valuable things are free and you can't buy. I mean, it's just an, it's just obvious. It's just obvious. In fact, money doesn't really solve anything. Otherwise all rich people would uh, be completely happy. Um, Their marriages would last forever. They would just feel total abundance and they would be completely healthy. Um, but that's just not the truth, is it? We don't, you know, we know that they're not. We see, uh, you know, even famous rich people too, that it's treacherous. It's just as hard being rich as it is um, being in any other things. Yet those who don't have think that that's the answer, but they, they lie to themselves. Don't they? It's a lie to think that the money will solve it. Can I just get some feedback? Those of you here, like, you, you know, you acknowledge that that's a lie, don't you? Otherwise, everyone that's rich would just be, it's, it's not true, you know, it's not, it's, it, money doesn't solve nothing. In fact, the reason is, is because if you look back over the past three, 4,000 years, we are rich. <laughs> that's why it doesn't solve much is because we are rich. <laughs> that's why, that's why. But we can still, we can still hold on to that lie or some, some unknowing personal development coach says, yeah, if you just had more money, things would be better, you know. No, nope. you'll be you'll be the same person just with more money. That's it. You'll just be the you'll just be just the same in a bigger house or with an extra car or something. It's um, it's not important. It's not important. You know, it really it really isn't. Okay, good. That was the first question. <laughs> it was a good question though. <laughs> it's funny. We might not get through all, all eight at this rate. <laughs> okay uh second question did everyone those who live can see it um so someone's trying to fight me on the money thing they say it does solve a lot of problems though uh no, no problems that really matter um having more money doesn't solve the rift in your relationship having more money doesn't solve that you deny yourself love having more money doesn't fix the loving relationship with your family Having more money doesn't solve anything that's truly important. Having more money doesn't solve the misguided notion that if you had more, you could be happier. It doesn't solve that you're putting your power somewhere else. It doesn't solve, it doesn't solve all those things we think it does. You see? It doesn't. And when as soon as we give it the power, uh, then we think that it's, it's, it's the powerful thing. You know, many who think that money's the answer don't realize how much support they have. They, you know, they say, well, it's going to give me food and safety and this and that. Well, a good friend can do that. A good friend can do that. Is it true? A, a beautiful family can feed you more than that. I mean, what's really important is, is to me to ensure that I hear what this is, this person is typing into me. But at the same time, I realize that you know, it's just such a misguided focus because what you're trying to battle me on is, is you're trying to hold a truth that unfortunately doesn't hold up in the light. 
it, it doesn't hold up. It, it, you know, it doesn't solve any problems that are really important uh, any better than, than having great support or great family or great society. And, and by the way, money is something that you get by giving value to others. So, so even then there's something else that allows you to have it. And so therefore, uh, the, the creation of a tradable good or asset is actually even more important than, than being given some money, having an ability to create it. You know, the old axiom of uh, feed a man versus teach a man to fish. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's very important, very important to not let these things sit in your psyche. And that, that's why I'm, I'm sticking with that for a second. It's, it's important uh, to, to not let these, these little trinkets or ideas of our, uh, our current cultural climate uh, infiltrate your truth. I'm not saying that uh, make it, there's anything wrong with making money. I'm just, I'm just addressing what I'm, what I'm, what's true. Addressing what's true. All right, so let me get to this next question. Cool. Cool. Thank you for the great content on the live session. My questions are, what kind of problems can I offer a recode session? Have you ever had a person the recode didn't work? Do the person come again after a session? Cool. Uh, so, so um, The, the 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 key the the key here is recode is a an amazing tool that teaches the the superconscious how to treat anything that's that's in the way anything that's in the way of of uh, what what you'd like to create yet yet many want to use it as a problem solving tool any any moment that you use it as a problem solving tool, you're giving the power to the problem. You're saying this problem needs to be solved in my life. And, and, the, and the problem with that is you're giving it power over your ability to be happy. And, and as soon as you do that, the problem exists and it gets power. But here's what happens that's worse. You actually teach your superconscious, self-conscious, and sub or unconscious that you can't have what you want without fixing yourself. And that's worse. That's worse. That's worse than the problem. That's worse. The worst thing you can do and what we all do is to teach ourselves we can't have what we love the way we are. Does that make sense, everyone? That, that is actually the worst thing. It, it's worse than anxiety, is, is actually being a person that can't have what they want until they fix themselves. Is it true? See, because what happens is, yep, you go do, you do recode and you get rid of a, a problem, hey? And then guess what? You taught yourself that you can't create without getting rid of a problem. So as soon as you start creating, guess what? Some resistance pops up which literally, which literally then you go, oh, well, look, I feel uncomfortable again. I better go solve that. And then that becomes someone's life. Instead of going and having what they want the way they are, their life gets caught up in this idea that they're never allowed to feel bad, that they're never allowed to feel a little bit doubtful or uncertain. Can you, did you get that? That they're not allowed to feel anxiety, then anxiety has power over them. Is it true? Let me know, is it true? Just, just in the chat, was it true? That's worse than the problem, is saying I must solve that. And, and so, so what we do for Recode is, is we, never, we never start with the focus on the problem because we start with asking a, a different question, which refocuses the whole consciousness. And we say, what would you love to create? And that focuses you on what you would love to create. We then put energy into what you'd love to create without needing to have a focus on the problem. You see? And so you say, well, I'd love to create myself to be a great public speaker. You're awesome. Let's, let's create that. And then we tune into it. We go into it and they go, yeah. And as I think about it, I feel anxiety. 
That's when recode comes in to allow yourself to let go, to recode those pathways causing anxiety, to have them fall off you, you know, like, uh, like just letting it, letting it drop, like you're wearing a, a dressing gown and you just let it go and you walk forward. It just, it just goes. That's recode. Recode is shifting and changing the instruction so then you can move forward. When I was taught the, the, um, the precursor to recode, it, it unfortunately was taught in, uh, in a way that had you focus on what was wrong with you. And what it built was that belief and it really didn't serve me. It really didn't serve me because what happened was is I had to remove anything that was in the way before I could do anything. And, it, and that was worse. That was worse, boy. There is nothing you can do worse than to convince yourself you can't have what you want the way you are because it's such rubbish. There's no mistake with you. You might feel unconfident or doubtful, but what's wrong with that? You might feel, you see what I'm saying? What's wrong with that? See, so if you look at successful creators, they weren't so focused on trying to have a perfect thing. They just went for what they wanted, who they were. And then as that, they developed into who they became. And as they focused on it, things that used to matter or things that used to be in their way disappeared. But they didn't go rushing off to try to fix everything that's wrong. It feels that in our um, society that, uh, you know, you're not allowed to be offended. You're not allowed to feel bad. You're not even, you know, you're not allowed to have sadness. You're not allowed to feel these normal things. And, and, uh, and then we, 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 we hush about them. You know, you can't feel these things. You've got to fix them. You must feel good all the time. It's kind of like that... Um, you know, Pleasantville movie, hey, you know, you must feel good all the time. You always got to feel good. And it, it's absurd, isn't it? It really is absurd. You know, it, it's not, it's not true. You know, it's, it's not honoring the human journey. And it's putting the power and idea that the, that the pain is, is bigger than you. And, and that's not true. You, you know, it's a message. It's a message, isn't it? It's a message. Every, every feeling, every discomfort, it's a message. And, and that message is stored there for a reason to say, hey, when you were four years old, you, you put on a talk and everyone laughed at you and you peed your pants. And so now you feel anxious to do public speaking. But you're an adult. That's got no, yeah, that happened, hey, but that has nothing to do with where you are now. And so, so you don't go trying to fix that thing because all you're doing is putting power in some 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 old uh you know archaic you know you go on an archaeological dig trying to find the problem it's 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 horrendous it really it really isn't it really isn't a way to orient yourself in the world and, and then you know a little bit of people sometimes um take this the wrong way with but it's true i say you know the personal development world is broken therapy world is broken because they, they simply have you orient as a broken person needing fixing you know, as a broken person needing fixing. And, and if you're a broken person needing fixing, what you're really saying is I can't have what I want in life. I can't be happy until I fix myself. There's something, you know, not correct about me. And, and, and building that identity, it's bad, you know, and, and you see people getting caught in 20 or 30 years of, of, of development or psychiatry or, or you know, no, 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 I don't want to, you know, not all, not all, but, but it's, it seems to create such a field uh, in such an identity and such a structure that they're not able to just go and have what they love the way they are. So to answer the question, uh, you can create anything using Recode, but there's no problem to solve. You can create anything. You're powerful. You're, you're, a, you're a super conscious awareness that has taken, you know, food and water, hydrogen atoms, uh, you know, carbon atoms, and somehow built a body. And then somehow this collection of, uh, of you know, all these elements of, of light bent around itself is bloody talking. It's a miracle. But you, you're the consciousness doing that. And, you know, for women at about age, you know, 10 to 15, you know, this intelligence and you completely reorganizes itself and, and, and you know you become a woman everything like things change and grow and, and it's, it's, there's an amazing intelligence in you 
no anxiety is bigger than that. You know, no, no worry about not having enough money is bigger. That's just not, it's just not, it's just not bigger than what you are. That's the truth. How are we all doing out here on this, this, uh, this live stream? I don't know if these, these answers are, uh, are right. Take what you love. I'm just giving them to you. No notes, just answering questions. Whatever's, whatever's nice for you, you take it. And uh, if it's not, uh, that's fine. That's fine. All right. Oh, this next question is very big. Uh, I'll read it out. Chris, I went to the five day super conscious challenge um, because of various life situations distracted me. Um, I wasn't able to continue, felt overwhelmed. Okay, there's, there's the question. What helped you overcome? There's the question. Sorry, took a little bit to find the question in it. What helped you overcome these obstacles such as financial and emotional uh, anxiety? I'm almost 16 on a disability. Well, first, um, I love you and thank you for the question. I, I haven't been 60 and on a disability. So I don't know the exact context that you're in. And, and, I, and, I, and I, so I, I, I can't know how I would be if I was there, but I can talk about my, my experience. Uh, I have an income below federal poverty line and I don't have any way of obtaining it. Well, well there, there's a thing. I don't have any way of obtaining the funds to, to do what you want. Okay, so, so, okay, so here's what I'm getting from the question is I don't have a way to obtain the funds to, to get what I want. And, and I, I, want, I really just, I need you to know that that's not, that's not a true statement. Okay, that is, that is not true. Uh, we have more ways than ever in human history to serve other humans and ask to be financially rewarded for it. That's the truth. There, there's never been more ways ever because now we have access to the whole world via the internet. So, so un unfortunately, the, there's, there's a real non-truth there. And, and I, want, you know, I, I know that the bottom price of my bottom program is $49 a week. There, there is no one, if they really wanted to fight, and I'm not recommending that that's what you'd spend, you know, this money on, but, uh, uh, well, I do recommend the program, but if it was my last $49, I would prefer to eat and I'll just stay to YouTube videos. <laughs> to, to be honest with you, if it's real, I'd wait a little bit, to be honest, I'd wait till I had, had more because stay on the YouTube videos. I don't think it's a, uh, a viable last $49. I don't think that's a good thing to do. But, but to make $49 in a, in a week, let's say that's what you're trying to accomplish. Hey, that's what, that's what, I, that's what I'm assuming. That you're, you're basically saying to me, there's something I want to do, but I can't because I'm, I don't know how to make $49. Or maybe what you're saying is if I did that, then my pension would stop. So it's really about how do I make a a thousand dollars a week or something like that. That that might be that might be the question, but but here's what I'm getting is you've given the power to this idea that you don't know how to create uh, some something or how to how to make some money, and, and that's that's simply not true. That is it is not true. You are beyond powerful, and there's an infinite. There's an infinite amount of things that one can do to, to create um, value for another human being from offering to clean someone's house, to mowing their lawn, to watching their kids, to there, there's just, there's so many to, uh, you know, proofreading someone's book, typing out data entry on the internet. There's, there's, there's just so, there's just, you know, I, I'm not going to go any more into that question because there's just so many, so many options. Hey, it's, it's not, it's just so many. It's, it's being willing to, to go for it. Yeah. So, so, so that's the, 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 the anxiety uh, that you have 
is because you're lying to yourself. I'm sorry to say it so bluntly, and, I, and I, I do not know what it's like to be your age or to have a disability, and that would be a, a, a big hurdle, a big hurdle, uh, I would suggest. And, and if you've had a lifetime of believing that you're incapable of, of, of making the finances, and then, you know, to, to know that if you make a bit more than you know, the government might stop giving you some, all, all of those things are things I don't, I don't know in my own being. But what I, I do know is you're lying to yourself when you say that you, you don't have the ability to make more money and that's causing you anxiety. The anxiety is created by the deceit, the deceit you're telling yourself because you know you're more powerful than that. You know it, you know it. It's just, you're lying to yourself saying you don't, and, and you don't, uh, probably the person who wrote this and probably doesn't like hearing what I'm sharing and um, that's okay. It's just, it's just what's true is the, the lie that you don't know how to create extra money is, is, is causing all the anxiety because it's just, it's just false. It's just false. And, and this is a good lesson for all of us, actually. We, we, we mostly make up stories about our incapability to have what we want to protect uh, our current um, identity. Is, is that true? Is it, is it true? Uh, most of us have a way to give ourselves an excuse. Most of us have a reason why we can't have what we want. <laughs> isn't it true is it you know can we all give some support to this person you know just give me a yes if you have maybe not that way but you have a way that you make up so you can't have what you want you may you know you're to this or to that or don't have enough of this or you gotta be better at that or if i only had more of that or i need more skills is it true is it true our, our self-conscious ego focuses on uh, how it can't have what it wants and what it must do to overcome those things in a belief that if it finally overcame that, it would be able to have it rather than just going and having it, you know, just going and having it. Yeah. And so, so I love you. I mean, if you really needed $49, um, you know, you could, you, you, there's, there's so many ways. Hey, yeah. So many ways. Yeah. But, but see, others are giving ideas here in the chat box, like go fund me and all these things. But, but the truth is, is you already know all those ways. When you're, when you're, um, you know, when you're absolutely, uh, when you're absolutely true to yourself, you know all of those ways. Yeah. You just, you just do. And so it's not about us telling you all the different ways. It's actually about you realizing that it's a lie that you've been telling yourself. Okay. Good question. Let me go to the next one. Oh, another, another money question. Cool. Another money question. That's, that's, that's good. Maybe I need to do a whole course on, uh, on money. Uh, hi, Chris. Loving this work so much. My question is about money and abundance. We've sat on a pendulum swing for so long, it's exhausting. Currently in the downswing. How do I stop the swing? Uh, yeah, so, so the, the pendulum swing is a metaphor we use when someone oscillates, where they have, then don't have, have, then don't have, have, then don't have. Uh, so, so, so basically, the, the question is, um, uh, it, it is really about, about uh, creating money and, uh, and abundance. So the, the first thing is money doesn't give you abundance. Money doesn't give, a, give you abundance. That's the first thing to acknowledge is uh, you can be abundant with or without money. No, that's not true either, unfortunately. And abundance doesn't give you money either. No, that's, that's not true. Uh, abundance abundance is, is our absolute. When we are source and we are created, we're in abundance of everything. Abundance of everything. Abundance is a natural state. 
there's, uh, you know, abundance is everywhere. This idea that we don't have abundance is, is, is not true and that money could give it to us. You can, you can um, be searching for what we think is abundance, abundance of time. Is that, is that what we're looking for, abundance of time? Well, you're still going to do something with that time. You're still going to do something with that time. So actually an abundance of time is to find something you love, what you love. That is how, that is how to have an abundance of time. That is actually how to have it. Because because if you, you say, I'm going to have all this money, I'm going to have this time, and then you don't have anything to do, is that really what you wanted? No. So what really abundance of time is, is, is something you really love. You know, abundance of health. Well, we all get given, uh, you know, a body that completely regenerates itself. Except if you give it stress, uh, then it regenerates stress, which causes problems. So we all have an abundance of health. We have access to regaining an abundance of health you know, uh, an abundance of, of, of choices or abundance of things that you might own. It's not really about the things that you might own. It's about experiencing them with people you love. And, you know, I've had more fun, uh, more abundance and fun-filled feelings on, on very cheap, very cheap, inexpensive outings that, in comparison to big, expensive things. Because abundance is a state of being. You see? Abundance is a state of being. Isn't it? Is that true? Just give me a yeah. Is that true? Abundance is a state of being. There's nothing that can give that to you or take it away. I know some people that have a lot of money that have no abundance. You know, they're, they're stuck working in corporate America with, with huge amounts of money. They're not abundant in the way that we want it. And then I know others who have no money. And they have so much abundance, you know, it's, it's simply not, it's not a correct assumption that that money will do it. I even know people that have sold businesses for, in particular, one for over $200 million. And it caused so much stress because they needed to figure out what to do with all that money. They were so stressed about losing it. And I think they still are. They actually got less abundance when they had the money, when they were making the money and they were building their business, man, they were abundant. You know, we, you know, it was, it was great. As soon as they got it all, you know, everything, everything was different. It, it, it's just not true. It's just not true. So this, this whole idea, this tie between abundance and money is just, it's just fooey. Eh? It's just, it's just rubbish. I, you know, you, it's very common that you'll hear a uh, life coaching millennial sitting in a beach in Bali, Indonesia, well, pre COVID anyway, sprouting off how you need to feel abundant to make money and it's just incorrect simply incorrect Sim simply incorrect eh. and how do you know this we all know people who have lots of money who don't live in abundance you know we know sports stars and basketball stars and musicians and we know we know bankers and they're not in abundance we, we know people who aren't even positive that have money you know, and I'm very negative people. We know people who, Warren Buffett, as an example, one of the most richest people on the planet, he lives in the same house, I believe, uh, that uh, he bought in the 60s, has McDonald's every morning and, and sits in his office all day. I think second or third richest person on the planet. You hear about some of these people who are super wealthy and they work 15, 16, 18 hours a day. They're not abundant. Does that make sense, everyone? It, it, it doesn't, it's not, it's not like this uh, mathematical equation. Can I get some yeses if you guys agree? Mathematical equation, if abundance equaled money, then everyone in abundance would have it. It, it, it simply does not hold up in, in reality. And money's not energy either, just to add. So, so to get back to the question, uh, first off, uh, so abundance is you. you, you be abundant now. And so that'd be my first answer is find abundance now. Find abundance now, not in when I have more of this. Find it now because now is the, is the equal to the future. So, so you find it now. And then you must understand some simple laws of money. You know, the, the first is um, receiving money. And then the next is, is having money work for you and, and grow for you. So, so firstly, to receive money, uh, you must understand money is a measurement, okay? Money is a measurement, and it is, it is a measurement that will flow in a certain way, just like time flows, okay? 
Time is a measurement, a mile is a measurement, a kilogram is a measurement, it measures something. Well, money measures value. Money measures value. That's what money measures, that's what it measures. And, and as it measures value, as it measures value, you must understand what you must provide is value to people in a way they want to pay for it. Okay. So what is value? Value is an increase in satisfaction or a decrease in pain. So if you want to receive money, you either make people happier or remove a pain in their life in a way they want to pay for it. That's how you will receive it. If you're then able to do that without your time, then, you've, then you're going to be able to make more than just what your hours can do. Then the second part of it is, uh, is then using that money by, uh, to invest it so it grows. And the, the way you do that, again, is, is there's people uh, that will, can use your money to build their business, which is simply out there um, giving value to people. Okay, so, so does that make sense, everyone? When you, when you understand that, then you simply ask yourself, well, what ways can I add value to other people's life? I've got a friend of mine. He runs uh, an $8 million company, and uh, he started out as a uh, commercial cleaner with a um, you know, vacuum, you know, vacuum on his back, cleaning toilets for gyms and churches and these sort of things. And he got really, really busy as a commercial cleaner. Now he has an $8 million business. And all he did is he figured out how to do that, do it successfully, brought in staff, built this massive, massive cleaning company. But that, that's, it's not glamorous. In fact, he's not that much of a really abundant guy, you know, and he did it within about five years. That was it. That's it, cleaning, cleaning toilets and things. And then he built a cleaning bathrooms, that's it. And they built a, built a very successful business. So, so you know, there's ways to, there's ways to give, give people money. I have another friend of mine in the last uh, financial crisis, 2008, he made a $99 product uh, to teach uh, realtors how to handle the downfall or the crash. And I believe he sold uh, over a thousand people onto a $99 a month subscription. And so he just had $100,000 a month. And each month, he just prepared one document. It went to these realtors for 100 bucks. He's making $100,000 a month. And all he did was get one person in um, Remax in, in Austin, Texas, to take that deal. Why he went. And, and, and that was, uh, he literally just saw the problem and, and said, well, here's a value of, of, of market updates and things or something. I don't actually know. Yeah. Cool. All right. I think we have time for one more question. One more question. All right. Is this good stuff? Yeah. I'll just go with the next one that was in order. Okay, so the question is, uh, I've battled depression for 30 years, it hurts. I've gone through therapy, I meditate, acupuncture, Abraham Hicks, and I still feel like there's a deep hole of never ending sorrow inside. It comes up for me always around my cycle. I feel like it holds me back for my real life happiness. Um, can I fix it with this? Yeah. It's a, it's a it's a big it's a big thing this this feeling of loss this feeling of, of, of sadness and I'm not a, I'm not an, an expert uh, on depression but I am an expert on knowing that where you put the power grows where you put the power grows. where you put the power grows. Now, our consciousness works in a feedback system. 
And so if you're trying to fix the depression, you're giving it the power. Therefore, it exists. Instead, I'd like you to focus on creating a life you love. Creating a life you love. And so, so we'll tune in and we'll say, well, what is, what is something I love, even if it's small? Even if it's small, what's something I love to do? I love to go for a walk on the beach. I love to have a coffee with a friend. I love, what do I love? And focusing on that takes your attention off what you're trying to solve. Because yes, Abraham's amazing. Um, that group of entities or her higher self, whichever one it really is, gives you a lot of information and good stuff. But if, but if you're using that to try to fix something, you're saying it's more powerful than your creative spirit. When you focus on, I want to, I'm going, I choose to create a life I love, and then you follow through and you do something you love. And then you do that, your brain goes, oh, I did something and I loved it. Then it feeds it back and you go, oh, that was something. And then the next day, what do I love? What would I love? And you focus and you do that, you feed it back and you feed it back. What I notice with people is if you've done 365 days on the focus of creating what you love and living in what you love, the volume has been turned up so much to love and joy and creation that what I've found is that this gets drowned out. It gets drowned out because you keep putting your energy, you keep putting your energy. And when your energy gets sucked back into that hole, you simply go, oh, that's interesting. What do I love? What do I love to do? And this part of you will say, nothing, nothing. I love nothing. And you go, well, it could be nothing, but I know that I love something. I love doing something. What, do, what could I at least enjoy right now? And then, oh, I'd, I'd enjoy doing that. And then you go and do that. And, and you stop putting, you stop, you stop putting the energy there. Does that make sense? You stop putting the energy there and you focus. And, and this is what I want to bring back to the group to finish on, is what you focus on creates your orientation to life. So if you've been focused on depression is a problem, depression is a problem, depression is a problem, depression is a problem. What if instead of trying to fight it, you just acknowledge that you've been sad? for a long time. And as soon as you accept that, you realize that's okay. Hmm. I'm not gonna fight it, that's okay. What would I love? What would I love? What would, what would I love? Now, as I said at the beginning, I'm no depression expert, I'm a creation expert. So I'm only giving you uh, I'm only giving you my truth, hey? And so, so take my truth and, and give it a go. But many of us, the last thing we ever want to give up is to give up our struggle. Buddha said, you know, life is struggle uh, and will sacrifice, eh? Hey? And, and, you know, the Christian religions definitely mimicked that there, you, you know, Someone said it had the ultimate sacrifice for everyone's sin. Hey, so so there's a there's a lot of of that in our psyche. We can't uh, ignore that that's there both east east and west that, that struggle. The last thing um, the human being will give up is their struggle, because that's what we think we are. Does that make sense? Is you need a new struggle. Why not, why not struggle for, for creating something super meaningful? What's the most meaningful thing you, you could create? One of my biggest heroes in life, um, Buckminster Fuller. Uh, amazing man, you know, died well before I was uh, alive and didn't, didn't, get to, didn't get to feel his presence. But in his uh, mid-20s, he, he, he came to the conclusion that, that life was just miserable when he contemplated suicide. 
And then he thought, well, that'd be a pretty selfish act. So why don't I just devote my life to creating something, the most meaningful thing that I could create. And that was his decision to say, you know, and then that's why we got tensegrity, tension with integrity, and we got the geodesic dome and, and all the beautiful creations that came through that uh, amazing man. And, and so, so, you know, the, the, this idea of, of what you focus on gets the power and what gets the power grows is how I would like to answer that question. And, and so just, just remember that, that, uh, that you, you've got a, a purpose here. You, you know, you're here for a reason. And I, I don't believe that reason is, is just, to, just to be sad. Uh, I believe that, the, you know, your reason is to create, create something, create what you love, find your heart, bring it into the world. Yet, if you continually try to battle um, that which you don't want, that which you don't want will keep fighting back. Because you're the, uh, the active observer, observing things into reality, you're the one keeping it alive your focus and energy is keeping that alive, you know? And, and it's not for you to try to work out. Many, uh, many, uh, let's, let's call them coaches or, or trainers would try to have you work out why you've been depressed. It's, it's trivial compared to the, to the uh, understanding that you are, that you are, and that life can be very hard and you're allowed to feel sad and it's okay. And you can be sad if that's what you like to be. However, I think because of your question and your desire and your message into me, I think we both know you've played that record enough. And let's change the song. Let's change the song because you know what's good about you you're so good at replaying something. If you've been replaying that, that CD, that song, that track for 20 years, you are good. You are, you are very good at uh, staying focused on something. Oh, you have learned how to hold one thing in your mind consistently. So let's just use that same strength for something else. Why not? What's the worst that could happen if you just chose to let it go and that you're more powerful than it and there was nothing to solve and it's okay if you have days where you feel sad. What's the worst that would happen if you just chose to let it go and each day ask yourself, what would I love to do today just because it would feel good? Who would I love to be around? What would be a meaningful existence? Because no one really knows the answers to those. <laughs> no one really knows the answers. So you do, you do have to make it up. You do have to make it up. And you might have to try on a few different songs to see which one you want to sing. True. So, so guys, I love you. I, I budgeted an hour of time uh, for this session. And I hope you guys got a lot out of it, uh, or at least something out of it, if not... Um, I'm not sure why you're still here at the end. <laughs> so I think you did. And uh, I super appreciate that. Now, if you're not in our masterclass, uh, I'm going to have one of my team uh, drop the link in. Our masterclass is brilliant. We do uh, six sessions every week where we do coaching and a recode. It's very thorough. Uh, most people come to one or two unless they, they really, really um, are wanting to master the work. And, uh, you know, we have a, a lot of, we have a huge university, a great community. So if you, if you could put the link in team, could someone pop the link in? There's a link, you can get more information, you can come and join us. Uh, and, and we'd super be grateful to see you over there. We have uh, live events coming up all over the place. It's included in your, um, in your, in your program. We do have a certification and uh, we, we have a lot there. And we, we would love to see you. That is where you can get, if, if you're in that, you can send your questions. Um, you can send your questions in for this call. Uh, and yeah, there, there's a price. We have, uh, we have a price to, to come in. And we have uh, a great support staff and great coaches and great team. And, and it's, it's very, it's, it, it's, it's where everyone needs to be. You know, so I really do want to see you over there. And uh, there's a huge university where a lot of the basics are answered. 
And by the sounds of it, I need to be updating it with a money course um, with the amount of money questions that, that came in. But it's um, but there, there's lots more. There's lots more we're going to be updating with it as well, actually. We've got a, got a lot to do. So uh, super love you guys. I uh, uh, appreciate you being here. If you're, if you're not on YouTube and Spotify and everywhere else that uh, you might like to hear this work, then, then please do. Uh, we upload this session to those places so you can listen to it as a replay. Uh, many people uh, love having Spotify. I think it's a free app. You can listen to it in your car, iTunes, podcast, uh, YouTube. Uh, for those of you who want to watch as a video, I think I didn't really do anything uh, too, too much needing a video today. And, uh, and, and thanks. Thanks for being here. Stay magnetic, stay focused. Uh, if you're in the masterclass, uh, send in your questions and, uh, and click that link if you're not and come and join us. Bye, everybody. You've got questions and I've got answers.